Welcome to this mix for National 5 Physics, looking at the Waves and Radiation Unit and the Nuclear Radiation section. This is a mix on Half-Life. You need to know that the activity of a radioactive source decreases with time. You should know what is meant by Half-Life and describe how to measure the half-life of the source. You also need to be able to carry out calculations to find half-life from data, which could be a graph or other means. Every radioactive substance has a different half-life. And the half-life is defined as the time taken for the half the radioactive nuclei to disintegrate or decay. Or, as we discussed in class, the time taken for the activity of the source to fall by half. Activity being the key word there, not radioactivity. So the time taken for the activity to half is the half-life. All activities will decrease with time. Some will happen over a very short time, some will happen over a very long time, and so won't be as noticeable. But all activity decreases over time. And once the alpha, beta, or the gamma radiation has been emitted, it cannot get that radioactivity back. It is in a different form now, and so the activity will decrease. A graph of activity, or counts per second, because activity is the number of decays divided by the time, or the counts divided by the time, has a particular shape. We can find the half-life of the radioactive source from this graph, but we need to remember to correct it for background radiation. Background radiation is natural naturally occurring radiation which could be things like rocks or food or man-made things like nuclear weapons fallout or natural things like cosmic rays so we need to correct our count for the background radiation So we take a test, we measure the background radiation, maybe two counts each second, so 120 in a minute. That would actually be pretty high. Ours are around about 20 counts in a minute. So 20 counts each second or two becquerels. We would then put our source in, measure its activity. And if we found it was 47, then we could say 47 take away 2 is due to that source. So 45 counts each second or 45 becquerels. We would then measure the activity again a period of time later. Correct it for the background radiation again and plot a graph of this. A graph looks like this one. The easiest way to find the half-life from this type of graph is to take half the initial number, in this case 1200, which is 600, read across to the line, and then read down from the line to the axis to the number, looking at what unit the time is, in this case 10 minutes. There may be a table of data like this showing that it's halving in 10 minutes and then it halves after another 10 minutes. Two. In the third column here, we've got a fraction and we can see that after the initial time, after one half life, we've got half of what we initially have. After two half lives, we've divided that by two again. So we've got half of a half, which is a quarter, then half of a quarter, which is an eighth, etc. So a radioactive substance has an initial activity of 60 becquerels. What will be its activity after one hour if the half-life is 15 minutes? 
So one hour equals 60 minutes. If we divide that by 15 minutes, we end up with four half lives. We then have to see what will happen to its activity from 60. So 60 drawn out with an arrow to 30, 30 with an arrow to 15, and we need to do this four times for four arrows. So seven and a half is the third arrow, and then 3.75 for the fourth arrow. Count the arrows, one, two, three, four, then make sure we add the suitable unit. So it started at kilobecquerels, it will end up as that. We can write it as a list, so 60 gives to 30. <coughs> Our second and half life, half again to 15. It will then continue to half to seven and a half, and then after four it will half to 3.75. But the best way is to write the initial activity and then draw enough arrows until we get to the number of half-lives that we've said we left for. So one, two, three, four. Count the arrows, not the numbers. 3.75 kilobecquerels. Radioactive subsample <coughs> has an initial activity of 800 becquerels. If it takes 24 years to decrease to 100 becquerels, what is its half-life? So in a similar way, we can write it as a list. I would write it across 800 to 400 to 200. Keep halving until you end up with your final activity. Count the number of arrows, one, two, three. So we've got three half-lives in 24 years. So 24 divided by three will be eight years for one half life. So you need to know that activity decreases with time, what half life means, the time taken for the activity to half, describe how to measure half-life and correct it for background radiation and to carry out calculations from a graph or from other data.